Hey, very good. <laughs> yeah. Could you uh, kind of uh, take the door, please? Yes. Actually, I met a lot of refugees back here since past few days. Yeah, oh, yeah, you did. Okay. How they're doing in the US. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I don't know where you no are, reason. but Florida is very hot. Yeah, uh, yeah. You're in Norway in Oslo right now, sir? Yeah, I'm in Oslo. Cool, good. Uh, so tell me your full name so I can pronounce it properly for all these stories. Yeah, I'm Jan Egeland. I'm Secretary General of the Norwegian Refugee Council, NRC. Thank you, Secretary, for giving us a chance to speak to VOA. Um, tell me about the NRC and latest appeal uh, for helping Afghanistan and addressing the humanitarian needs, and especially refugees. What we've seen in Afghanistan is an explosion of need, desperate need, since the takeover of the Taliban in August. That is in part because the international aid was cut off uh, to a large extent. The development aid was cut off and all of the assistance to the Afghanistan public sector was also frozen. The, uh, the sanctions from many countries contribute to there not being an a Afghan economy at all. So when I was there in uh, September of last year, just a few weeks after the takeover by, by the Taliban, the mothers in the camps of displaced people around Kabul told me, we are fearing that we will freeze and starve to death this winter. And their worst predictions are now coming through. People are starving and freezing to death because it's so difficult for us to scale up aid as we should. A lot of children are paying the price of this um, sanction against the Taliban, even though there was some uh, aid arrived in Afghanistan, but it seems it's not enough. And you see it's still so many bad news coming from Afghanistan, how the children are paying the price. Why the world is so ignorant or silent about it? Well, I think uh, there is a lot of, uh, of, of myths about uh, Afghanistan now. Um, clearly, it's, it's, it's a difficult situation and we are struggling with, for example, girls' education. Girls are still not allowed to do secondary and tertiary education in too many places. Uh, the, the gender equality is a constant struggle for us. However, I asked my people on the ground, is the main reason that we are held back in saving lives in Afghanistan uh, restrictions from the Taliban? Or is it actually that the international financial transactions are not allowed anymore and that there are sanctions for so many countries? And they said it's by far the latter thing. Even aid money we have received from Norway and from the European Union and so many other places, we cannot transfer to our colleagues in Afghanistan at the moment because of no functioning banks. Uh, the, the, and why, the, why, why that? Because the banks feel that it's too dangerous for them to transfer money because of the sanctions from the US and other uh, places. So we have to truck uh, relief items over from Pakistan and from Iran, instead of buying locally uh, in, in the market in Afghanistan, and thereby also we contribute to this downward spiral of the Afghan economy. Very sad. And about women, we have still, we got another new report today about Human Rights Watch on women paying uh, is under attack by the Taliban. When it comes to refugee status, women are paying the highest price as well, as a mother, as a wife, as a daughter. And what has to be done to protect women within this context and help them? Oh, there are lots of things. I mean, of, of course, we need to convince the new uh, military and, and political authorities across Afghanistan that Afghanistan cannot thrive unless there is full gender equality and parity, education, uh, right to work, and so on. In province after province, we have been able now to negotiate both uh, 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 primary education for boys and girls and the, uh, the uh, full freedom of movement 
and professional guarantees for our female staff. We will continue to do so. We will also continue to make sure that the various minorities get assistance. I mean, the, the Hazara, the Tajik, as well as the Pashtun, which is the majority uh, po population, will struggle to, to, to do all of these things as we do in all of the places where we work. But we must have the opportunity to, to, to have an economy in the country. Uh, humanitarian uh, relief will not be enough. And the NATO countries should remember that the 40 million civilians, mostly women and children, that they left behind when they went for the door in July and August, those are still there. And they still, as much as before, need our help. So the other consequences that Afghan people are paying the price is a lot of refugees and flux. And UNHCR is now dealing with it. I'm sure NRC and also Swedish with a lot of refugees they are leaving the country. The only thing people choose is just to be somewhere else. And they are still uh, suffering. And how do you address this influx of refugees when you say there's so many uh, challenges uh, against your work, against the, the time? Well, firstly, there are millions of internally displaced in Afghanistan. I met many of them in these, the whole string of informal camps around Kabul that have been growing in recent years, including all through last year. These were people fleeing to Kabul from Helmand, from Kandahar, from Herat, from the north, from so many places. Um, and, and, the, and, and, the, and the people came because of the fighting, the insecurity, and also because of the drought in the country. Uh, one of the worst droughts in a generation has now engulfed the country. Then on top of that, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands are leaving Afghanistan to join the millions who are already in Iran and in Pakistan. I was in Iran uh, in November. I met many Afghan uh, refugees and what they told me was quite revealing. They told me that nearly all of their relatives and friends in Afghanistan that knew of their assistance in, in Iran were trying to come to the border to cross to Iran. Many of them also said our aim is to go to Europe, which again should be should really be an impulse for the Western NATO countries that left militarily and diplomatically to resume development aid and resume investment in the social sector with us as we can guarantee it goes to the people and it doesn't go to the government or the Taliban. Because if not, Afghanistan would, 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 would really be emptied by people and they will all wander west and, to Europe and, that, and Europe doesn't want that. So last question, sir. I don't want to take too much of your time, Secretary. Uh, how uh, NRC is contributing to Afghans resettlement in Norway? You have taken a lot of Afghans in Norway as well. You welcome them. Well, we're not active in Norway. We 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 are even at one Norwegian institution. We're all, all, all only active in the field overseas for the last generation. However, we have criticised Norway as we have other countries that have in the past uh, sent Afghans back to the country as they did during the previous government in Afghanistan. Norway is not returning anyone now to Afghanistan and Norway should, well, we will be fighting for that, open the borders generously for Afghans seeking uh, uh, refugee status. We've seen that Denmark and Hungary and other places have been horrifically closing their border uh, to people seeking asylum and seeking protection in their countries. Shouldn't be like that. There has to be a responsibility sharing uh, among its uh, nations, including having America again being a leading uh, nation in receiving people for protection. It shouldn't only be poor, uh, poorer countries like Pakistan or Iran or, or Lebanon or Jordan or, or, uh, or uh, Tanzania receiving people, we should also, we who are uh, among the strongest and wealthiest nations on earth. Um, I forgot to ask you about the Norwegian uh, committee dealing with uh, 
Um, uh, I just forgot that there was another question. I forgot. Doesn't matter. I think it's okay. We well, got the. I yeah. think we covered everything. No, about the, Taliban, have... about the Taliban, because I spoke to Kai ID, um, former UN envoy to Afghanistan, yeah. and what he was recommending highly was engaging, talking to them. And so that will be probably a shortcut solution. So do you believe in talking to the Taliban somehow will help uh, flow of this aid and also help your work uh, can be done inside Afghanistan? We have been dealing with the Taliban for the last 10 years. We had operations in Taliban controlled areas as we had in the rest of the country long before the Taliban took over Kabul. We even had a girls school in Taliban controlled areas. Uh, we ha have met them systematically since they took over power and we are pushing as much as we can for gender equality, for human rights, for access, for protection of civilians and so on. I met with top Taliban leadership when I was there in September of last year. Uh, the foreign minister and the minister for humanitarian affairs and refugees and opposed all of these issues. And we were told that they would enable our work. We would be able to work according to all of the humanitarian principles and that our female staff can work freely alongside male staff and that we are, are um, allowed to do any kind of female education, which we will be doing. Thank you so much, Secretary. It was wonderful because yeah. I spoke to Swedish uh, SRC Secretary as well, and they also talk uh, that they are talking to the locals and through local they yeah. are in the 